Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a 2D clicker style game in Unity and welcome to episode 11. In this episode we are going to save our game using something called player prefs. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with this series and every other series I have on this channel and with that in mind, let's get to work. So, I said at the end of the last tutorial the idea of what I want to do is have let's say our first save to be cost $100. Second save to double that cost 200, third save to double that cost 400. So that is what we're going to aim for in this episode. So firstly, let's create a button, UI button, and I'm going to place it in the top right. And let's set the anchor position, top right. And let's change the text of the button to say, save game. And I'm going to have it as interactable untick so we can't actually click that at any point until we activate it ourselves underneath it i'm going to have some text to say this is how much it costs to save so let's have that there and let's anchor that top right as well and by default we'll just have that as cost and i did say 100 dollars, but for testing purposes at this point i'm going to have it as 10 but the finished product will be 100 I'm going to set it as white and increase the font size to 20. You can make this uh, look a bit better. You can glam up the text, uh, the button, everything. It's, you know, it's up to you. I'm just doing this quickly, not to waste time. And I'm going to rename the button to save button and the text to save text. So we're going to create a script which will allow us to save. And it's going to be called, well, save game. So create a C sharp script save game to V not to C save game and open it up in Visual Studio so this script is going to contain a couple of methods we don't need void start void update uh, any in fact we do need update let's get rid of the annotations so we're going to need to reference the global cache script and we're going to start with public int and we'll have save game cache semicolon we're also going to need another integer which is going to define how much the save will be so public int save value and by default we're going to make that equals 10 as i say it'll be 100 in the final version and we'll also need the button itself so public game object save button semicolon and finally that text box underneath so public game object save text semicolon uh, we're also going to need to add to the namespace at the top because we're using ui elements because remember anytime you try to access ui element on any object you need to have the namespace using unity engine.ui so first things first we need to make save game cache equals global cache dot cache count so that means this script can easily read this in this variable right there so that now means that we can create an if statement to say if we have enough cache then we can save so we can do that by going if and in brackets save game cache is greater than or equal to save value then open curly bracket and what we need to do is firstly set the button as usable or interactable and we can do that by going save button dot get component and in spiky brackets button open close bracket dot interactable equals true semicolon and at this point we're going to do the inverse of that in an else statement and we need to basically just copy that and change that to false and save so that is the important bit of it all so if we press play now back in unity when we've attached this script to the in fact we'll attach it to the mechanics object because you know, we may as well just try and keep everything in one place. So save button is going to be save button. Save text is going to be save text. So now, if we press play, 
We can't click this button. It's not interactable. So let's get ourselves $10. And there we go. The button becomes interactable. So our next process is to make this button actually work. And we can still do that using this right here. We'll come back to the void update because we're going to need to reference this uh, once again. But let's start with the actual button itself. So public void save the game. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, this is where the fun happens because we need to use player prefs to reference certain items within the game. Primarily, our amount of cookies, our value, how many bakers we have, and how many shops we have. So we probably may need to reference these as well, but we may just be able to kind of work it out mathematically depending on our bakers and shops. So we'll use four player prefs for now. So public void save game in here in this method we need to go player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quotes the name of the player pref that we're going to use so let's start with our cookies so saved cookies quote comma and then the value that we want saved into that player pref and we can use global cookies dot cookie count close bracket semicolon so you can see the process of how this player pref is working it's saving to its internal memory this value into this player pref so we can do the same so player prefs dot set int in brackets and quotes saved cash quote again comma global cash dot cash count semicolon and there is one thing we're going to do before we do all this but we're just going to save all these play press first and then we'll get everything else sorted after so once again i'm going to copy this now so we don't have to retype it all again and we're going to have saved bakers and then we have that as global baker dot baker bake per sec and then finally we're going to have this one as saved shops and this one will be global shop dot number of shops so here you can see we're saving to the internal memory the four vital parts of the game so i'm going to save that script now you should be thinking at this point we're clicking it but nothing is being taken away from us and really we need it to be taken away from us before we actually save our player prefs so in order to do so before we do that let's have global cash dot cash count less than or minus equals the value of our save game so save value semicolon now at this point what we need to do or rather after we've had all the uh, data saved we're going to have save value multiplied by two semicolon and save at that point in fact do you know what equal if is that right no other way around sorry multiplied equals two and save so what that's doing is multiplying save value by two each time so that's where if we had 100 it would then become 200 it would then become 400 then become 800 so you can see the incremental value of how much it will cost us to save so at this point what we need to do is reference the save text and what we can do in that is in void update save text equal effect dot sorry get component because yeah i'm getting ahead of myself there get component uh text open close bracket dot text is equal to and as it stands the cost comma dollar value so is equal and in quotes cost colon space 
dollar quote plus save value semicolon and save that script so at this point when we press play in fact do we need to set any more variables i don't think we do do we so we can see save value is currently set as 10 there so let's press play and then let's make some cookies let's sell some cookies there we are so we can save our game now and once we've saved it we need to make this reference itself a little bit more so save value has not multiplied so we actually uh, need to attach that to the button it would help jimmy <laughs> so if you spotted that i was just testing you don't worry <laughs> so let's go to our save button but you can still see the process of what we're doing here save button click on plus let's drag and drop our mechanics object onto there click no function go down to save game and save the game so now i'm hoping we can get this working there is one more player prep we do have to save and i will give you a couple of seconds to try and work out which one it is so let's save our game there we go so it's taken 10 away from us it now costs 20 to save so let's get to 20. let's keep going and there we go save game now just to make sure that that doesn't actually take away all of our cash Let's have 40 something dollars and then try and save. Hopefully this should work. Nearly there. So we have $44. When we save the game, we should have four left. We do. And now it costs 80. Okay, so our player prefs are in this game now. We've stopped playing the game. If we were to load our player prefs like we're going to in the next tutorial, we would basically start with everything we've just saved with. So have you worked out what we actually need to save the game, uh, save the player pref with now? I hope so. We need to save the value of our actual player pref. So uh, the value of our saving in the player pref, I should say. Best way to put it. So if we didn't, every time we save, we'd restart at 10 again if we load the game up. So to do that, we need to make this a global... Um, static so it needs to be a global one it needs to be referenced from different scripts so let's change public int save value to public static int save value and save and that will make it disappear from the inspector panel but that's not a massive deal so what we'll do is down here after we have save value multiplied by two we then need to save that into the player pref so we can copy what we have here, these player preps, place here, and set int, and we'll have save value. And all we do in there is just placing save value and save. So that's all there is to it with saving data. Now, next tutorial is where we're going to integrate a lot of things together because we're going to create a main menu which will allow us to either start a new game, which will reset all our player prefs, or load game, which will retain our player prefs. And there's a little, not too complicated, but there's a little bit of maybe fiddling around to get that just right. But don't worry too much. This is the general gist of how we can save a game. And in fact, this will work for pretty much any game to save data. So, guys. Until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.